We've both seen it by now. Scrolling through Instagram, watching shit posts and bunch of memes before all of a sudden, this incredible reel piques our attention. Some guys doing this crazy pull up. It's not a one arm pull up. It's not a front lever. It's not a muscle up. It's just a regular pull up. But what makes it look so smooth is that he's pulling all the way to his hips. Now, if you're anything like me, you're imagining yourself doing this. I mean, you can do pull ups, so how difficult can it be to just get a bit higher up, right? So you step up to the pull up bar and tell yourself to pull as explosively as you possibly can, only to all of a sudden realize that you're barely able to get yourself a few inches above the bar. Fear not, because in this video, I'm gonna go over the five simple exercises that I've used to go from barely getting my chin over the bar to now easily being able to pull past my abs. Stay tuned for the end where I'm gonna detail a full training program that you can use to unlock the high pull up as fast as possible, even if you're a complete beginner. Now, if you actually watch this video in its entirety and you take action upon it, you implement this routine into your own training program, you completely transform your pull up ability within the next couple of weeks. So let's get in and let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna go over five exercises in this video, starting off with the two most important ones, the two main exercises you'll be doing, which are weighted pull-ups and low rep explosive pull-ups. Now, weighted pull-ups are great for building strength, that raw muscular strength, and although some people argue that there is no great correlation between how heavy of a weighted pull-up you can lift and how high you can lift in a pull-up, I would say that the more strength you have, the heavier of a weighted pull-up you can do, the more potential you have for transforming that raw strength into explosivity through certain exercises like the low rep explosive pull-ups. So in other words, the heavier of a weighted pull-up you can do, the more potential for building explosivity you have if you only apply the right mental and physical training. It's all about those neural and physical adaptations, baby. Okay. Now for the low rep explosive pull-ups, what I like to do is to start hanging from the bar as stationary as possible. And then once you start to pull, you wanna pull yourself up as high as you possibly can and as fast as you possibly can. It's also great to have that component of you actually start stationary because that's what you want. Like you wanna have the zero to 100 type of power and that's what you want to build up. And here are a few cues to keep in mind is that well, you wanna have straight arms before you initiate the pull and you wanna keep your elbows close to your body and then just explode as fast and as high as you possibly can. Now when I say low rep explosive pull-ups, I really mean low reps. I'm talking about as little as one to two reps in a set, pretty much maximum. Like thinking about three, you could do it, but like honestly, if you don't have the strength to already be able to pull to your abs or to your hips, and if you can't do a proper good muscle up, like a really high muscle up yet, you probably don't even have the strength to do three reps in a set, at least not of the type of explosivity and intensity that I'm talking about. So stick to one to two reps per set, and when you explode, you wanna think about and both, you wanna have the mental and physical connect together, right? So you wanna have the intent of pulling as high as you possibly can. Pull to the sky. I believe I can fly is the mindset you want to have with these. I mean, mindset is really important because in the beginning, you won't necessarily be able to get very explosive, but it's important to build up that mind-muscle connection and for your mind to truly understand what it means to tense up all of the muscles you've got in your body and to just unload all of that energy as you propel yourself up towards that bar. So keep that in mind, don't just do the physical reps, make sure that your mind's also in it, that you're thinking about it, that your intent is in the right place, and that you're not intentionally aware of pulling as hard as you can, tensing up as much as possible before you unleash yourself to the top of the bar. Now, for the accessory exercises, here are three different variations you could look into. For the first one, this is going to be seated L-sit pull-ups. Personally, I like to do these just starting on the ground, so on B-bars or high parallettes, because it's easier to just maintain the standstill position without having to exert too much force either before you start the reps, and it's also easier to either like reset sometimes between several reps or to just have that to have that reference point of the ground. I fi find that when I'm doing these, like hanging on a bar, it's a bit different and a bit more tiring, but a bit more tiring in aspects that won't necessarily help with explosivity. And it's also nice to really ensure that you start from, from ground zero, from standstill, without any motion, and then you don't wanna go as explosive as possible. But this is a great exercise, and I feel that it builds sort of this explosive strength that you'd want for high pull-ups, so definitely something to check out. 
The second exercise is going to be banded explosive pull-ups. For this, it's not as important that you remain stationary right before you do the pulls. But with this, you just want to get as high as you possibly can. And a few of the benefits you get from this is the sort of mental aspect of feeling how it is to be that high up above the bar, really seeing it with your own eyes type of thing. And then also on the way down, if you've tried to slow down and control the descent as much as possible, you'll also build some pretty good forearm strength, which I feel is pretty relevant for the actual pull and for sort of snapping yourself up towards the bar. For the third and final accessory, guys, this is going to be a bit of a weird one for many of you, but this is going to be reverse banded pull-ups. So regularly, when you do banded pull-ups, this would be for mo mostly for people that cannot do pull-ups yet. So you loop a band around the bar, put your feet through, and this way it's easier to perform pull-ups than doing regularly like unassisted ones. But when you do the reverse banded pull-ups, what you want to do is that you want to anchor the band to the floor, to the ground, to some type of object that's below you on the bar. And then wearing a dip belt, you want to, you want to be able to connect yourself to the band such that when you do the pull-up, it starts to um, provide, I was about to say assistance, but it provides... <laughs> Well, it makes it more difficult, it provides more load, the higher up you go and the more stretched out the band gets. So with this you get to make the top position more difficult and you thus get to improve your top position over time. I think this is a great exercise very few people use. Basically I've never seen anyone perform this in my, in my life with my own eyes. So definitely an interesting one to consider. This you can do for a bit higher reps, but uh, make sure to, to really control that top position. Might be nice to do a bit of a lock off for a couple of seconds. And for this one as well, like once you get better, you can use multiple bands, heavier bands, or even use a band in addition to using weights. So you do weighted pull up. So if you can do like a 30 kg weighted pull up, you might want to have 10, 15 kilos on the pull up. And then you do the banded uh, or the band as well. So you have a reverse band connected in so that you do the weighted pull-ups and the top position is even more difficult emphasizing that strength towards the top because what you want to do and what's quite easy to build up when you're doing explosive pull-ups is to have that initiation that's why we want to start from as stationary of a position as possible with many of these exercises to build up that 0 to 100 power and then with the reverse banded pull-ups you can emphasize this top range so that instead of just slowly gassing out slowly like oh, okay having that power fade out you're able to exert yourself further and further on so you can get well squeeze out that extra height and get even further up the bar all right so programming how does this look like in an actual training program but what you want to do is that you want to train this about two times a week similar to what you do to your pull training and i'd start off each session doing two to three sets of one to two reps of the explosive pull-ups. So you hanging from the bar, being as stationary as possible, extended arms, straight arms, and then you go from zero to 100, you explode up with the intent of going as explosively up as possible. Then after this, you could do about one or two accessory movements for one or two sets. So for example, the banded explosive pull-ups and the reverse banded explosive pull-ups. Here you could go for a bit more of a higher rep range, so maybe about three to five reps, but I'd still make sure that I'm going explosive and that you're focusing on that dynamic power. If you notice that you can't really exert that much explosive dynamic power when you have like three to five reps, keep it on the lower side again, one to three reps thereabouts, and you will notice that you'll get great explosivity returns on this. Lastly, I'd finish up the session with about two to three sets of weighted pull-ups. This is to build up that raw strength, which, as I said earlier, can transfer to explosivity if you apply the other exercises, mainly the low rep explosive pull-ups, but also the accessory exercises that I mentioned. And you might be a bit confused, why would you really want to start with the explosive pull-ups and not the weighted pull-ups, which might require more strength? And this is simply because our focus is to become more explosive, so that comes first in the training program. And also the weighted pull-ups that come at the end of the session, even if they're at a bit of a lower weight than what you'd usually be able to do if you start the session completely fresh with weighted pull-ups, you'll still build strength over time, your body will adapt to it, and the stronger you become, the more potential you have for that explosive power once again. So there you have it, five exercises I'd use to build up those explosive high pull-ups. So pick your poison, use the accessories that work the best for you and that you enjoy the most. And that's pretty much it, five exercises, two sessions per week, and I promise that if you follow this system, you'll be able to build really high pull-ups in a matter of a few weeks. Also, if you guys be interested to discuss anything related to 
functional training, calisthenics, climbing, martial arts, pretty much most types of fitness, most types of training, feel free to book a Calendly call in the link down below. It's completely for free, so if you guys are interested in chatting, you guys have some questions about how I train, you have some questions about how I would put up a plan, how I would do like different types of calisthenics programming, or strength training, or if you have some stuff you want to share, like feel free to book a call. I'm really excited to get to know as many of you guys as possible. Feel free to do that. And as always, remember to keep on training, train what you love, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you guys.